Yes, good evening to everybody. Welcome to the today class. And yesterday I dealt the defamation part one. And this class that I would like to complete the defamation part two. And please read, unmute and read what I posted on the screen so that I could know that you are with me and I am with you. Hurry up. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Libel and slander came. Professor Dr. Mohammed Sahib Hussain. Very good. I appreciate it. What do you call this one? It is gavel, G-A-V-E-L, gavel. G-A-V-E-L, gavel. Yes. That is the thing which I want. Okay. Now, let us come to our yesterday class because I am here up to here because I put the asterisk over here. So, the intention of the wrongdoer, but here it says that a few illustrations to understand what is the defamatory, what is not. To say a motorist drives negligently is a defamatory. To criticize goods is not is not defamation. To say that the baker's bread is always unwholesome is a defamatory. To state that a person has not the degree of skill which he holds himself as possessing is a defamatory. So if a person doesn't have the qualification, if he's practicing uh, an advocate or a professional like a doctor, then it is not a defamation, it is a truth also. Because quack means a person who doesn't have the qualification of the medicine, but it is practicing. Is the quack. In the north, there are many persons are there, those who got the, a degree, I means purchase degree, they enroll themselves also. But uh, thank God it is not there in South, uh, South India mostly. Let us see the, the intention of the wrongdoer. The person making the defamatory statement knows that there are high chances of other people believing the statement to be true and it will result in the causing the injury to the reputation of the person defamed. So the intention is very much important factor for the defamation. The intention of the wrongdoer. So that also take into account why he want to say so. What is the what is the result behind it? What is the intention behind it? What is the cause behind it? They will also take it out. So that also an important factor. The next factor is our element is the statement should be false. Of course, the statement should be false. It doesn't mean that the truth statement you are not supposed to say when there is no obligation on you to say so. So that is also an important factor. So the statement must be false. A defamatory statement should be false because the truth is a defense to defamation. But it is not absolute truth. It is not absolute defense at all. If the statement made is true, then there is no defamation as the falsity of the statement is an essential ingredient of the defamation. The law does not punish anyone for speaking the truth, even if it is ugly. Okay, you can say the truth, but the intention should you say the truth. If nobody will ask you, you want to say the truth? Nobody asked you, how is that woman or how is that she? But if you want to go on saying it, when, they, when somebody asks you, when there is an obligation upon you, then you can say the truth. No, truth uh, you say, so you can say uh, to the so and so, X is a, a war, and X is a war, and uh, each street and going and saying the so. Then what is the intention behind it? Your intention is to spoil her trade, her business. That is the intention clearly. So that is also counted, uh, the statement should be false. The next is the statement should not be privileged. So some privileged statements are there. Like the privileged people, like the speaker is the privileged person, a judge is the privileged person, a president is the privileged person. So these privileged persons, uh, they do have certain exemption. In some cases, the statement may be privileged. The person who has made the statement is protected from such a liability. Like uh, a judge who says that if he has a witness has given the wrong statement and the, both the statement is controversy, then the judge may also say that uh, you witness, you seems to be a liar. Yes, he can say so. And it's not about the defamation because a judicial officer is having the, such a privilege, like the speaker. Okay, the statement must be published. And in my study class that I told you what is published. Can anyone repeat it? I told you that in a study class, very clearly, suppose language known, language not known, if it is a register letter, if it is the inland letter, if it is a postcard, and I also told you one joke uh, where the two women are quarreling at the municipal water tap. Even the beggar joke also, I, a, example I have told you. 
What is meant by publication here in this sense? If you know it, you tell me, please. If you don't know it, don't waste my time. Pass on, sir. A, a communication between the one to two is not a publication. A communication between the one to two, then it will be heard by third, or known by third, understood by third, then it will amount to defamation. A third person interference is must, and he should have the knowledge. Not knowledge in the sense he understood also. Then only we can say publication, otherwise we cannot say publication. That is the thing. For the defamation to occur, the statement should be published. Means third person should know it. The statement should be communicated to a third party. Either voluntarily, involuntarily, by any other means, the third party got such information, he understood it, then only it is amount to publication. Any statement written in a personal diary or sent as a personal message does not amount to defamation. No. If you write a letter to one person to another person and the other person read it and no third person could know it, it is not amount to defamation. Are you getting me? Yes. Yes, sir. If the wife writes a letter to the husband or husband writes a defamatory letter to the wife, it is not amount to defamation. Unless, unless, until it will know to the third person. So that would be the thing. Suppose if you write a letter to your husband, defamatory letter, and your husband mother has read it, it is not a to defamation because the address is, the letter is addressed to the husband. At that instance, no other third person could see it. That is a gentleman agreement. But if the sender knows that, it is likely that the third person may read it. Sender knows that. I told you yesterday, if you write a letter in Urdu, the other person, he doesn't know Urdu, then the definitely the other person will take to the person who knows the Urdu language and he reads it. Yes, it is amount to publication. Am I right? Yes, yes. yes. sir. Read the in Mahindra Ram Kesla. In Mahindra Ram versus Arnandan Prasad, the defendant was held liable because he had sent a defamatory letter written in Urdu despite knowing the fact that the plaintiff could not read Urdu and ultimately the letter will be read by someone else. Whether it is able to defamation or not? Defamation, sir. It is a defamation because he knows that the letter to whom it is addressed, he doesn't know Urdu. That means definitely that the fellow will take that letter to the somebody else and who knows the Urdu language. When he reads it and explains him, yes, it is amount to defamation because there is a publication. Next, the third party believes that the defamatory matter to be true. Even third party believes that the defamatory matter to be true. The other people of this society believe that the defamatory matter said about the plaintiff is true. Otherwise, if a liar will say in such a matter, even the public will not take care at all. Because everybody knows that is that fellow is a liar. And that to be the 100%, 100, 101% liar. So, they don't believe in it. Because whatever he says, he says the puff. Is it clear? Good. Yes, sir. Next is the statement must be cause injury. Of course, sometimes injury may be there, may not be there, doesn't matter. The statement made should harm or the injure the plaintiff in some way, either in the reputation way, or in the dignity way, or in the smear, or it is a, a label. So, for example, the plaintiff lost his job because of the statement made. Yes, now you tell me whether it is amount to that fellow lost the job because of the statement he made it. Whether, whether such a statement, what he made is a defamatory or not. Suppose if it is a defamatory statement, then naturally that he lost the job. Are you following me? Yes. Suppose somebody removed somebody, whether it is amount to defamation. 
because if you did not no, follow sir. the rules and regulations, that you will services will be terminated. Of course, they will give the warning to you, and second warning, a third warning, they will terminate you. With the termination, not amount to the defamation, because you committed a mistake. Am I right? Yes, sir. Suppose somebody find you, is it a defamation? No, sir. Why he find you? Means you committed a mistake. You are not supposed to travel free on a motorbike. But try people are traveling on the motorbike. So he caught him and he scolded him and he said, "Pay the fine." Yes. If you suppose you use such a word also, you are not supposed to take there is a defamation. So that is also a very important factor when you know. Whether the defamation or not, so defamation in the sense uh, it should cause an injury or may not be injury. In the both the way, it can be said to be a defamation because somebody uses obscene language and uses some filthy language towards you, and you are not going to lose anything. But doesn't it mean that it is defaming your your personality? Answer is yes. So publication by the two or more persons that is a motor publication. So when are two or more persons agree together to write or utter the defamatory words of the another, and one of them writes or utters the words in the presence of others, and who have so agreed, all of them may be sued as a joint tort feeser, provided the defamatory matter has been published to person other than those who were acting together or the plaintiff. Suppose there are three or four members are there. They want to use the defamatory matter towards somebody else. Sir, you just you know told me if the two or more than two are there, they they are said to be the publication. But here, these two or three common platform, they want to defame somebody else. <coughs> Excuse me. So they are planning it. When they are planning two or three, it's not able to defamation, unless. Other than these two or three, heard it, then it is about to defamation, and that will be not to that person to whom they defamed it. No, it will be known by another person. Suppose if you want to defame X, so you all P Q R joined together. You want to make a defamation to X. X did not hear it, but why heard it? Whether it is about to defamation? No, Regarding X. Regarding X, X did not hear it, but it is heard by the Y, and the Y K. Sorry, it is heard by the Y. Yes, because P Q R is there, no? It is heard by the Y. Y came to X and saying, "Hey, you guru, you can't turn around, Lu." So whether it is a motor defamation? Yes, sir. The question comes over there. It I told you already. It is refers to a particular person. Say if they have taken the name, okay, let him know first. But a third person goes, "Sare, ni guri chawale jiptan." Whether it is written or is oral, whether it is reached to the person to whom is defamed, no. But a third person heard it and he giving information to him. So here, any one of the ingredient is not fulfilled over there. It is not a motive defamation. It should be heard by the second person when the first person said, and in the presence of the first and second, a third person heard it and understood it. Then we can say it is a publication. Am I right? Did you get my point? Did you get my point? Sir, explain one second, sir. Explain one second. See. You are you are going to defame X. P Q R made the plan, but X did not heard such a defamation. But uh, by any other way, Y overheard it and passed it to the information to X. So overheading, passing information to the Y to X, whether it is a motive defamation. So in my view. X did not heard anything, number one, and 
whether it is a true or false also not known to the why or why also create a, a create a what i say vengeance toward the pqr to say to the x then what is the authenticity that pqr plan to say so and so thing to x unless until it will be heard in the oral form or in the written form it should be there merely planning itself whether it is amount to defamation answer no no sir suppose you want to kill anybody you plan your mind okay i will go to buy the revolver i want to do this thing you have made the all the sketch but you did not execute it whether it is amount to offense no sir answer sir. no so that was the thing which merely thinking and wants to make it out and somebody overheard it and pass on to him and nothing happened over there adu etlu nadante are nu barra nu kontaru ra ala kontra mari ikkada meputaru ra nee chella ikkada naa chella nu barra ne ipade vindra iddaru full kottukuntaru the third person passing over by they asked what is your issue are sir you and sir what barra kontra nadu naa chella meputanu annadu అసలు బర్ర ఎక్కడ రా చేరు ఎక్కడ అంటే వాడు కొల్లే సార్ కొంటారు అన్నాడు హౌ కుడ్ యూ డూ సర్ సజ్ ఎ థింగ్ అన్నాడు అంతే వాడు కొల్లే ఇంకా బట్ దే ఆర్ ఫైటింగ్ సో వెన్ యూ అటెండ్ సజ్ ఏ వాడ్ దేన్ యూ కెన్ సే డిఫెమేషన్ అదర్వైజ్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ అమౌంట్ డిఫెమేషన్ బికాస్ నథింగ్ ఈస్ కమ్ అవుట్ ఫ్రమ్ అవర్ దే సో రిపిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఎ డిఫెమేటరీ వర్డ్స్ ఎస్ ఎవ్రీ రిపిటేషన్ ఈజ్ ఎ న్యూ డిఫెమేషన్ every repetition is a new defamation sir nenu okade sir anna sir emanna ra are sir you are a son of a prostitute anna sir nara avana anna emanna ra malli repeat chesindu second day also he repeated can every repetition is a about a defamation it depends upon the nature so let us see so, mute mute ravikra mute Unless I will say, don't uh, mute, I am getting the sound. Ravi Kiran, you mute it. Yes. Thank you. Sir, sir, sir. Okay. Sir, sir. Yes, I, I could know here who is speaking and who wants to speak. Yes, now, generally, the person who first makes a defamatory statement is not liable if the statement is republished by another person. Suppose if a person said, if it is published over there okay it is amount to defamation if it is not published over there nobody heard it it is not amount to defamation so another person even though he expressly states that he is reproducing what he has heard from the some same source however no person has the right to repeat the slanderous statement without any justification person why do you make such a thing without any justification such a statement if a person who is aware that a defamatory statement is false and still repeats or communicates it further then he can also be held liable for a defamation that means he knows that his information is false and he published it today in the newspaper the same information is published by andhra patrika andhra prabha andhra jyoti or dakkan herald or dakkan chronicle or hans india every publication is a fresh publication and every printing is a defamation sir because yesterday the patrika has published sir and the same article i published sir no defense first to ascertain whether the article written is a right or wrong or genuineness is there or not or it is a puff whether the proof is there not proof is there you have to verify and publish it otherwise if the first publication becomes a defamation all other repeated publication also a, a fresh defamation suppose the same article is published same article is published today again the same article is published tomorrow there is a two defamatory state two defamation cases is made only one newspaper yesterday publication is one defamation and today publication is one defamation if the same is going to be published tomorrow then tomorrow also is going to be a third 
But the matter is the same. The person is the same. Because the matter itself is a different matter. The matter itself is a false. At that instance, every publication is a fresh publication. Repeat. Repeat. Every every publication is a fresh publication. That is the point. Either it is published in the same newspaper or it may be published in the different newspapers. So defamation by omission, yes. There may be a publication by the omission, failure by the defendant authorized and able to remove the defamatory matter, which is the work of another is publication by him. For example, if someone puts up a defamatory letter on the notice board, okay? I repeat, if someone puts up a defamatory letter on the notice board of a club, club is a private organization. Am I right? Only members of the club yes, will be allowed. Only members of the club will be allowed. So it put it in the club notice board. Okay, well and good. And the person in charge has not removed it within a reasonable time. Then he will be accountable. The person who is in charge of this notice board, if it is a defamatory matter is posted over there on the notice board, then the person who is in charge should have to remove it immediately. But if he kept it for two or three days, by that time, many people saw it. When the many people read it, is it not amount of publication? Tell me. Yes, publication. It is amount to publication because it is there on the notice board. A person who goes and reads the notice board would aware of it because he knows the language of it. Am I right? Say yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If the third person read it enough, it is a moment to know. But any again, the I told you, you know, suppose to whom they are writing is not to not known to the person. Now you tell me. Sir, you no, told sir, me, it no, will be different. First, first person. Only the first person, when he is making it to the second person, the second person did not know it, but it will be notified. Only the notice board knows, sir. Why did you write something to the second person when it is a false? Sir, when it is a sir, I am asking whether he knows it, may not know it. Why you wrote first, you tell me. Because every people saw that on the notice board. That means, the second person having the knowledge and not having the knowledge is not essential. It depends upon the case. Lang. The second person to whom that you are going to write a defamatory matter, either he knows it, may not know it, doesn't matter. But that is known by the third person already. Because you put it on the notice board. That means, to whom that you are going to write, if it doesn't have the knowledge, it doesn't matter. Because the other people got the matter and they will carry this matter to him. Whether it is amount to defamation, in my knowledge, without any hesitation, I can say it's a defamation. What about your view? Yes? It is a defamation. It is a demand to defamation. Whether she is having the knowledge, whether other person is having the knowledge is another question. So a measure of the damage is in defamatory publication. How do you measure it? The court must take the following things into the consideration while deciding the question of the computation of the defamatory publication. Number one, the conduct of the plaintiff. How the conduct of the plaintiff and his position and standing in society, the nature of libel, what type of the libel he did it? The absence of the refusal of any retraction of apology of libel. Any apology is put it over there or not. The whole conduct of the defendant from the date of publication of libel to the date of the decree. And the defendant also will be known whether the defendant is having such a character or not. So all these things will be taken into measure. Suppose if a rickshaw, a rickshaw puller is defamed, how much amount he will get it? And next, if a collector is defamed, how much amount he is going to get it? And who gets more amount? Yes? 
కలెక్టర్ సార్ వై ఇక్కడ చెప్పాను కదండి బికాస్ ద స్టేటస్ స్టేటస్ ద పొజిషన్ అండ్ స్టాండింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ ద సొసైటీ ఐ ఆల్్రెడీ మెన్షన్ హియర్ ద పొజిషన్ అండ్ స్టాండింగ్ ఇన్ ద సొసైటీ విల్ కౌంట్ when you are measuring the defamation and the nature of libel also what type of the libel means written state publication writing one so that also counts a lot suppose if you made a 10 allegations out of 10 six are proved only four are not proved but still it is not about the defamation because six are proved am i right answer yes not necessarily all 10 allegations will be proved if the six also proved over there yes the other is not proved okay it will not be amount to defamation because six are proved okay read this case la oh. ah. breaking voice breaking voice i am getting okay don't read i read i read don't read i read okay mute mute గొరంటాల వెంకటేశ్వర్లు వర్స ది డెముడు బి డెముడు దేవుడా డెముడా దేవుడు కాదు కానీ డెముడే కానీ ద రెస్పాండెంట్ వర్స్ ది బ్యాంక్ ఆఫీసర్ అండ్ వర్ సెంట్ ఆన్ ఏ డిప్యుటేషన్ టు వర్క్ యాజ్ ఏ మేనేజింగ్ డైరెక్టర్ ఆఫ్ ఏ కోఆపరేటివ్ సొసైటీ ద అపలెంట్ ద ప్రెసిడెంట్ ఆఫ్ సోటీ సెండ్ ఏ కంప్లైంట్ టు ద బ్యాంక్ ఎలిజింగ్ దట్ ద రెస్పాండెంట్ ఆడ్ ఏ ఇల్లిసిడ్ కనెక్షన్ విత్ ద లేడీస్ హుచ్ ఎఫెక్టెడ్ ద ఇమేజ్ ఆఫ్ ది సొసైటీ డ్యూరింగ్ హిస్ టెన్యూర్ యాజ్ ఏ మేనేజింగ్ డైరెక్టర్ సో when he was the managing director he is having the list uh, connection with the, some of the ladies who are there such allegation is made regarding the managing director because he went to the adjacent uh, area as a managing director for the deputation purpose but this fellow doesn't want there who the president of the society doesn't want that fellow should be there so the responded sent a reply denying the allegation made against him okay he said sir i did not have such a thing and he gave a clear reply the branch manager of the bank conducted an inquiry okay he conducted the inquiry and found out that the allegation were false yes there is merely allegation it is a false and were made only with a view to see that the respondent is not reputed inspect the affairs of the society so this fellow will not be deputed over there to inspect the society that's why allegation is made over there but the allegation made false and it is amount to defamation the respondent filed a suit for the defamation claiming damages of 20000 and the court held that the allegation were per se defamatory yes it is a wrong statement they made it the allegation itself is a it is a defamatory and hence there is no truth in it and hence the defamation is past 20000 will be given to the officer who was deputed over there however the court considered the fact that the allegation were made known only to the staff and the bank and there was no wide publicity of course only bank people know its seat there is no wide publicity has happened over there but still but still of course he will get the le- lesser amount but if it is published in the newspaper and he will get the more amount because more more the people know it and more the defamation less people know it less defamation only family people know it and there is a little defamation so the apparent was liable to pay only the 5000 as a damages because not the 20000 because it's not circulated to any other people except the bank itself suppose if it is published in the newspaper then it will be different are you getting me yes sir yes so that was the thing which happened so defamation versus freedom of speech sir freedom of speech unnadi gani article 19 1a unnadani sampudu samputai ante gaadu article 19 2 kuda unnadi okati it is reasonable restriction are you following me yes sir reasonable restriction is another article also there you cannot say whatever you like iga no nalakaku em antaru andi telugu lo karam le na aa etla ante etla vaadukochu andi answer no so he said article 21 of the constitution the right to reputation also comes under the ambit of article 21 so a, a wonderful case law is there subramanya swami telsa andi meeku telsa sir bjp is a very BJP great orator very intelligent fellow very intelligent mamuli gaadu so subramanya swami versus union of india 
the petition regarding the demo, the, the criminalization of the defamation was filed. He said Article 21 is violated because Article, sorry, Section 499 find it of the IPC against the Article 21. But they said Article 19 is there. Okay, 19 is having the 19 plus 2 also there. There is a reasonable restrictions are there. It is not thoroughly given Article 19, Sub-Article 1 and Clause and clause A. 19-1-A. You cannot give the every right. And 19 Two is there to reasonable restriction, hence uh, it is not able to any dichotomy would be there and there is no article violation is there. So Subramanya Swami, he has said, Article 14 of the Constitution, where well, the democracy and individual has a right to criticize and dissent, but his right under the Article 19 is not absolute and he cannot defame another person as uh, that would offend the victim's fundamental right to the reputation, which is an integral part of the Article 21 of the Constitution. So you cannot criticize to whom that wherever you like it, because your freedom is restricted. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the latest case, La Sreya Single versus Union of India. In the challenge is in the Section 66A of the Information Technology Act. Whatever the information you posted in the WhatsApp, it is you who will be responsible for that one. They made it such a thing. So, here they made it very much clear that no, because WhatsApp, it is a point, it has come out from the various other places. So, Article 66A, the group, person who is the group or administrator is not responsible for that one. So, Article the Section 66A of the Information Technology Act is. is against the article 191a and hence uh, it is struck down shreya single versus union of india 66 capital e is struck down from the information technology act so defenses available for the defamation is justification by the truth okay mir truth cheppalandi cheppadani gaadu kaani why there is a necessity to tell the truth is also very important fact that means you have the bad intention. That's only every time that you are saying so and so X is a prostitute, so and so X is a war, so and so X is a harlot. Morning till evening, next day and next day. Why you are saying so? Sir, I want to protect the public. Is it your duty? Yes. Is it your duty? No, sir. <laughs> Even no. she is having the HIV AIDS also, you are not supposed to say. Unless until unless until you are uh, you are any any one of your family member is visiting there at that time we can say so but otherwise you are not supposed to say so am i right so here truth is not an absolute defense truth is not an uh, absolute defense so fair and bona fide comment yes all liars are liars because it's a fair comment is a bona fide comment and there is no such a then in the Japan. So Dalali is equal to so Dalali is equal to one one Ek Kalali. One Kalal. <laughs> I told you yesterday. Whether it is the amount to the defamation to the Kalal. Gondalok defamation and the No, sir. No. It is a fair comment. Because it is not particular. Yes, it is a fair comment. It is. Are Kothmir Vakila naalan kundi? Can a particular person be opinion kundi is defamation? But you made a now yes, all yes, the all, all the liars are now Kothmir Vakilu because if they are happy, if they could buy the Kothmir enough, Kothmir never naalandi. Coriander. Coriander leaves under. Coriander seed center. Coriander leaves center. So, the main principle relating the defense of the fair comment has been stated by the Duncan and Neil as follows. So fair comment then we the factors. A. The comment should be on a matter of public interest. Public interest means the comment. Number one. Number two, the comment must be based on facts. The facts means the base. Number three, the comment though it can include the interference of the fact must be recognizable as a comment. Yes, it should be recognized as a comment there, Gundala, but it does not hurt somebody's feelings. The comment must satisfy the following objective test. Could any man honestly express that opinion on the proved facts? Yes, 
Honestly, the person could say in such a thing or not. Next is, even though the comment satisfies the objective test, the defense can be defeated if the plaintiff proves that the defendant was actuated with the express malice. Yes, if the defendant proves that this fellow is using with malice only, because for everyone she is saying that X is a war. For everyone in the whole locality, means that fellow is having some malice to defame her. Are you following me? The same approach yes, is followed in India. Any matter on a subject which attracts the public attention and is a matter of public interest. For example, A puts the allegation on B of being corrupt in a, in a newspaper. If A is not able to prove the allegation were true, then his comment will not be considered fair comment. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now, in the newspaper, I read it. The ruling party politicians are scoundrels. They made it very in the in the in the in the newspaper. But uh, he said yes, but I did not point to, to a particular person. Ruling party politicians, how many are there? Many are there. Am I right? Yes, sir. Then to whom that it refers? So a generalized comment one can made it. So fair comment and justification is good. So justification, what is justification? What is a fair comment? Where there is a justification to say so, okay, you can say. Suppose if a doctor says so and so person having the HI positive. Because he said to that person who father came, sir, I am going to give my daughter to that fellow. Now that fellow came to you, whether he is having HI positive or not. At that instance, it is the burden of the doctor to reveal the truth to the bride's father because the father is going to give the daughter to that fellow. At that time, there is a justification is there. There is a justification is there. But can the doctor will publish with the photo and name stating that he is having the HI positive? No, sir. That is not a fair comment nor there is no justification. Because anybody's secret should not be revealed. Because the doctor knows what he is having and what he is not having. Are you following me? Yes, sir. So when justification is pleaded in the respect of the matters of the opinion, the defendant must prove not only that they honestly held that view expressed, but also they were accurate. So justification is a fair comment is a fair Fair comment comes in generalized things. Okay, absolute privilege given to the speakers, absolute privilege. Judicial officers, president, even a, a court officers also they do have it. Even a police officer is also having the absolute privilege in certain cases. So it gives the person an absolute right to make a statement even it is defamatory. Yes. They say during the judicial proceedings, yes, they can use any language. By government officials, yes. By legislation during the debates in parliament, yes. Either debates in the parliament or in assembly also. Allowed. Whatever you want, you can say. During the political speeches in the parliamentary proceedings, yes. Communication between the spouses, yes. Between the spouses, yes. They can eat, say, Are you following me? Say yes. Yes, sir. So, for example, X is a member of the parliament and he gives a speech in the parliamentary proceeding which defames Y and here X is protected by the absolute privilege. It is a famous case, sir. The Ryan Mir exam was said. TJ Ponnan versus MC Varghese. The case law even that the court held that the letter sent by husband to his wife. Husband rastadu. Ever wife ki rastadu. Me naya na itla, me naya na itla, me naya na inichindu, me naya na kinni guna alunai. So the husband writes a letter to the wife. Your father means his father-in-law. Are you following me? Your father is having so and so. Your father is so defamatory letter written about the father-in-law to the wife by the son-in-law. Whether it is a most defamation? No, sir. So a communication between the wife and husband is a privileged one. And it will not be declared to somebody else. So what they said is, 
it does it does he not a case of defamation then they say it is a privileged communication between the spouses as per the section 122 of the indian evidence act of 1872 if any communication between the wife and husband it is a privileged communication suppose if they have taken the divorce or filed a case for the divorce at that instance okay the communication can be used as a defense in the relevant but uh, before that one the wife and husband is one entity is it clear in case if they are yes, divorce sir. proceedings are filed okay the wife can show to the father in law his father and that can be filed in the court of law because already already divorce petition is filed before the divorce petition if anything is between the wife and husband is no because how it reaches to the father in law means wife told if merely wife told whether she can ha having a right to tell but so long the relationship of the husband and wife is there she is not supposed to tell if she tells also it is not amount of publication are you following me yes sir in chapter in chapter 10 versus secretary of state for the india it was held that the letter from the secretary of the state of india to his parliamentary under the secretary providing the material for the answer to the parliamentary question was absolutely privileged all parliamentary proceedings are absolutely privileged so the pv narsimha rao versus state of very very case law the apex court held that the privilege act of 105 sub article sub article 2 which gives the immunity from the court proceeding extend even to the taking the bribes by the member of the parliament for the purpose of voting in a particular manner in a parliament can the can such a privilege will be given to the member of the parliament taking the bribe answer is no answer is no because if any no. officer if any officer taking the bribe it is an offense so here in this case law they say the apex court held that the privilege in article 105 sub article 2 which gives the immunity from the court proceeding extend even to the to taking the bribes by the member of the parliament for the purpose of the voting in a particular manner in the parliament no they cannot be extended over there it is only to the court proceedings it can be extended so qualified privilege ante unta varike cheppala mottham cheppaddu that is the qualified privilege reference for a job applicant be job applicant unnad ankondi so suppose you write here letter to the earlier where you worked what at that varai vidu number 1 rogra vini isukokandi ani ప్రజెంట్ జాబ్ కి రాసింది అనుకోండి దట్ ఇస్ నాట్ అమౌంట్ దమౌంట్ ద డిఫిమేషన్ ఇట్ ద క్వాలిఫైడ్ ప్రివిలేజ్ విడ్ బి దేర్ బికాస్ అనదర్ కంపెనీ ఆస్క్ ద ఫార్మర్ కంపెనీ టు నో ద ఎంప్లాయీస్ కాండక్ట్ అండ్ హిజ్ స్కిల్ అట్ దట్ ఇన్స్టెన్స్ ఇస్ ద క్వాలిఫైడ్ ప్రివిలేజ్ విడ్ బి దేర్ హీ కుడ్ రైట్ ఇట్ వాట్ ఎవర్ హీ వాంట్స్ ఇట్ బట్ ఇస్ నాట్ అమౌంట్ డిఫిమేషన్ ఆన్సరింగ్ ద పోలీస్ ఎంక్వైరీస్ పోలీస్ ఎంక్వైరీస్ చేస్తాను అనుకోండి కరెక్ట్ గా చెప్పవలసిందే క్వాలిఫైడ్ ప్రివిలేజ్ a fair criticism of published book in a film in a review review would write it yes you can write it this book is not up to the mark and write you even why you why you want to only review even a case also even a supreme court case also you can review it it's not properly dealt you can review it you can show the reason so communication between the parents and teacher so naturally parents and teacher it is a qualified privilege would be there because teacher say about the son to the parent so qualified privilege will be there communication between the employer and employees yes there is also qualified privilege is there because employer keeps the record of the employees in the service book la rasadu confidential report about employees yeah. are you getting me yes sir yes so sir. communication between the traders and creditor agency all relationship that are protected by the qualified privilege so some protection would be given for the qualified privilege here i have given the absolute privilege and qualified privilege and you will get it in the net also what are the comparative is there absolute privilege and qualified privilege so here statement of opinion consent censor passed in good faith the person having lawful authority then acquisition made in a good faith to the authorized person and the difference between the civil defamation and criminal defamation tells me go civil defamation ante only one individual would be suffered criminal defamation ante 
people at large will be suffered non cognizable compoundable aithe idi non cognizable aithe compoundable kuda aithe konni cases so this is the distinction between the two defamation if you taught a defamation as a crime then i made this point over here then the so conclusion that i want to make it out here is i want to make it a conclusion here is like this in conclusion the defamation law serves the purpose of protecting the people from having their reputation injured resulting from the false statement made against them however in still in accordance with the right to the freedom of speech and expression as people can make true statement and give their opinions this area of law seeks to be protect person reputation from being hurt by the preventing unfair speech the apex court has stated in various cases that the ambit of the freedom of speech and the expression sacrosanct but is not absolute so article 19 1a is not absolute right because a reasonable restriction is put in article 19 2 so it is also said that the right to life under article 21 includes the right to reputation of a person but it cannot be violated at the cost of the freedom of speech of another so is always the dichotomy would be there freedom of speech that you will say then some curtailment would be there so any speech freedom a freedom should be given to a person if the full freedom will be given over there and there will not be a growth so freedom should not be full me kodukulaku me pillalaku me evarikaina full freedom ichind ankonde manchi kaitara and vallu teda gaitara more democratic suppose if he knows it what is wrong what is right at the time you can give the full freedom but if they don't know it is what is wrong and what is right and if you give the full time freedom naturally it leads to the negative sense the negative developments are more and the positive developments are less so if a man wants the real growth even myself also if i want a real growth then i should have to limit myself i should have to limit myself then only i the growth will be seen over there if i don't limit myself if i indulge in all the activities over there then my growth will be stand still because the aim which i put it over there i could not reach within the time see even the way i teach the law of tort do you think that the same way i will teach the constitution answer no answer no 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 because i worked hard for the law of tort in years 32 years i worked for the law of tort that's why i do have certain grip it doesn't mean that i am the master over there but still i have to read it and to know the cases and remember the cases also otherwise if you don't remember the case you cannot say to your students you cannot say to your students this thing what is that what is that tort law is nothing but product of case law tort law is multiplication of case laws no case law no tort law yes if you yourself is i don't know the cases then i cannot teach my students even i sell also i have to repeat revise and review it so that i could remember it otherwise even myself also could not remember it so this is about the today's uh, defamation and uh, you can get it the distinction between this in any website also you could just type it the difference between the civil defamation and criminal defamation and you can just type it you are also get the absolute privilege and qualified privilege absolute privilege only is having the parliamentarians and judicial officers and uh, prime minister uh, the president such a people even a governor but a qualified privilege okay employer is having to a certain extent and some qualified privilege would be there for the employer even a club also yeah it is the indian tradition that in the beginning or the ending of this any program that we will uh, make the play of the national anthem now the national anthem will be janaganamana
सारे जहां से अच्छा हिंदू सदा हमारा जय हिंद जय हिंद